Coming up next, the Josh Kirby on Sports Podcast. In one corner of the table, we have our co-host CJ Mintier. In the other corner, we have myself. Together, as a duo, we will provide you the greatest content on today's podcast. So stay tuned. Indeed, I'm glad you connected. This is Dave Johnson, voice of the Washington Wizards. You have connected to the right place because you are listening to my man, Josh Kirby, on Sports Podcast. All right, another week, another episode of my great podcast. Yes, indeed, I am Josh Kirby, the host of the Josh Kirby on Sports Podcast, part of the Mayo Please Podcast Network. And I'm CJ Mintier. CJ, great to see you again, sir. How we doing? Doing good. Yes, sir. So, um... Let's get into it. Before we do, we are sponsored by Route 11 Chips. Make sure you check them out in stores, Martin's, Food Line, and Giant. JR Beats Official, thank you for the music. Dave Johnson, as always. And that's all the thanks we need to give for right now. Let's get into it, starting with the playoff scene. The NBA and the NHL both in the finals and starting with the nhl the blues and the boston bruins played last night and i watched some of the game um st louis started off really tough but the bruins just came back It, it was a home game and the bruins had the fight in the last two periods and they got the job done yeah, Robert Kraft was in the house, hopefully keeping his mind <laughs> off of the lawsuit and everything. The Bruins came back from a deficit, of course. He was showed on the Jumbotron. Bruins starting off hot, which I expected them to. They they should be the favorite right now, especially with the way that they manhandled the Carolina Hurricanes. I think that they're going to hopefully take this series pretty easily. But, like, the thing, the thing about the Bruins is that this will be the sweep for them if they can do this because they have a World Series championship. They have a Super Bowl championship. And this will be the city of champions right now. I can tell you that if the Boston Bruins can do this against the Blues. Starting off hot, way to go for the Bruins. Yeah, I mean, what a way to cap off a sports season with the Patriots, the Red Sox, and the Bruins all winning a championship. Like, that's pretty crazy. Three teams in a season winning a championship for Boston. And... If they can do it, I I don't see why Boston, New England will be called the city of champions because they've shown that they can win championships. So um, just looking down down the scoreline here, St. Louis started off with the first two goals in the game. Then Boston came back second period with 216 and 1241, tying the game. And then in the third period, Boston just nails the hammer down on St. Louis with two goals, 521 in an empty net by Brad Marchand, 18-11. So, um, CJ, my question for you is um, the people, um, the St. Louis Blues, um, do you think they're going to have an issue with Brad Marchand and his trash talking and how good he plays the game of hockey? Well, it's not just the Blues that have a problem with Brad Marchand. It's a lot of people who have an issue with him. I don't think they'll be any different than any other city in the in the country that has an issue with Brad Marchand, which I don't understand why the dude looks like he's 5'8", five, 5'7", five, and it looks like a lot of people could pummel him to the ground if he tries to talk crap. And he's talking crap in pads. No, no offense, he's talking crap in pads. If somebody wants to fight him on the street in St. Louis of all places, I'm pretty sure that they could handle him. Yep, so um, game two on, what's today, Tuesday, Wednesday, actually, in Boston. So, um, CJ, your prediction here, um, Boston, St. Louis, who wins, how many games, and why? 
I feel like St. Louis can at least take one in their home in their home stadium. They'll go to that on Saturday, but I think it'll be a four-one series for the Bruins. Honestly, that they, they they just have the experience and and they're also a very good team in the playoffs. Whenever they get a chance to be in the playoffs. Uh, so I could see the Bruins easily sweeping them or just at least taking it to a 4-1 series. Yeah, and um, fun fact, the last time the Blues were in the Stanley Cup final, they faced the Boston Bruins. So a matchup to repeat itself maybe. So um, we'll, we'll keep you updated throughout the Stanley Cup finals. I'm just sad the Capitals aren't in it. So um, m- moving on here to NBA action how in the heck did Toronto beat Milwaukee? That, that's my question. I thought Milwaukee had the Raptors had. And in that crucial game, Kawhi Leonard with that dunk over Giannis, I was like, oh my goodness. In Toronto, in their first NBA Finals in franchise history. What are your thoughts on that? I wa- I saw the whole game. The it, Kawhi Leonard is something. He's something else. I can tell you that much. Uh, I feel that he's the best player right now in the uh, NBA playoffs. I know that says a lot. A lot of things, especially with Giannis in the playoffs. But the way that he handled everything, uh, he had 17 rebounds as a point guard. 17. Re- that's Russell Westbrook stuff, and he's not stat stuffing. That's the difference between uh, Kawhi Leonard. Is that He's putting himself out there because I know he wants to win a championship. And it sucks, too, because this is going to be the last time we'll see Kawhi Leonard in a Toronto Raptors jersey. He's already made up his mind. His uncle, once again, has already made up his mind for him because he was the whole he was the whole reason, basically, that Kawhi left San Antonio and screwed San Antonio by sitting out, basically. And now we're going to see him gone from Toronto. It's going to happen. He wants to play for a big contract with a better team. Well, there's no better team than Toronto right now in the East, but he's going to want to play for a bigger contract for maybe in LA. Uh, The thing from this game is that the Milwaukee Bucks, they just let off the gas pedal way too late. Uh, They were in the lead pretty much the entire half and then into the second quarter, into the, uh, the third quarter, excuse me. And they just let off the gas pedal. A lot of silly mistakes and a lot of crucial errors that they made. It was a very sloppy basketball game. It really was. A lot of passes that were thrown around that just did not look like this was an NBA Finals, Conference Finals game. It just did not look like that. But Kawhi Leonard is, I'm telling you, he, he is spectacular. I can't, I can't deny that. Giannis Antetokounmpo, he's... He's he's something else, I will say that, but Kawhi in this game was spectacular. He truly was. And yeah, he the dunk over Giannis that that said it that was the whole picture of the game. It was crazy. And also Drake, he's finally gonna be able to see his team now play for an NBA Finals championship now. Yeah, so um Toronto, their first in uh franchise history. Do you think Golden State has them handled or is Toronto going to make it tough? No, I think Golden State has them handled. I don't I don't expect them to to deal with a team like Golden State. Nobody has and I don't think anybody will. The only team that was able to do it was Cleveland back in 2016. And the two Cleveland teams after that had basically less firepower and also the Warriors had Kevin Durant now Kevin Durant isn't going to play in the first two games so maybe Toronto could get one win but I don't see it happening I don't see that Golden State is just going to roll over to a team like Toronto especially even though they beat the Bucks, I don't see um, them being the Warriors because they just look so good because now that Kevin Durant has been injured it's been the Steph Curry show and the Steph Curry show has been unreal and not only that, it takes the pressure off of Kevin Durant because now that Steph Curry is coming alive, you're going to have a lot more to worry about than just Kevin Durant now. So I don't see the Raptors taking this at all because of just the firepower of the Warriors right now. Yeah, I agree with that. But I think with Kevin Durant not in the first game of the finals, I think it, I think the first two or three games of these NBA finals are going to be 
really crucial for the Raptors if they want a chance of winning. Well, they, the Raptors technically do have home home court advantage. They technically do, which is surprising because every single year Golden State has had home court advantage. But this year, Toronto has it. So who knows? These first two games, they may be filled in Jurassic Park, the complex that's right outside their stadium. And they may be able to go up to nothing, but I don't see it happening, especially with the way Steph Curry has been playing, uh, especially against the Blazers. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, I feel like Toronto can give – them a run for their money with KD out, but with the rest of the firepower of Golden State, I, I'm giving it like a man. I I can't even put numbers on it, but um, it's gonna be interesting to see. I feel like Toronto has a chance to give Golden State a run for their money, but the thing is, can they put the puzzle pieces in the right place? If you know what I mean, like just can they make the good plays? Can they shoot their shots, you know? And with KD out, that should be some motivation for them to play even harder, better, tougher. And who knows? Maybe it will be 2-0 going back to Golden State. But, you know, anything can happen. It's the NBA Finals. But um, it's really going to be a very interesting series, in my opinion. But, CJ, Golden State... If they win it again, wh- where does this place Golden State in the history books in the NBA? So for Golden State, hmm. well, I- I'd have to put them like, um, well, I'd have to put them number three all, all time. I, w- I would have to do it. Uh, I would have to put them number three. The only The only other two teams are the Chicago Bulls. Uh, of course, with the Michael Jordan era. And then the Showtime Lakers, I would still put over them. I, I still feel that the Showtime Lakers would still be the best team to give them a run for their money. Uh, I still feel that that team, and and also just the Lakers in the 21st century, have been very good, especially when Kobe Bryant was a part of their team. And But then Golden State, this is five straight NBA Finals. They're going to go down the history books. You can't take that away from these guys. No matter what happens... They're going down in the history books. You make it to five straight NBA Finals, and you won three out of the four already. If you win this fourth one, you're four and one in five straight NBA Finals. That's pretty dang good. That's pretty good. So I'd still have to put them number three, though, for me personally. Yeah, so um, it's going to be interesting to see. And predictions here, I'm picking Golden State to win in six games. Because I still feel like Toronto has a chance to give them a run for their money. And CJ, your predictions, how many games and why? I'm saying five. I'm saying Golden State in five. I I think that Toronto would be able to get one on them. But I just don't see a team that has gone to five straight NBA Finals who who knows what's at the end of the tunnel for them if they win it again and knows what it takes to win at the highest level at the NBA Finals. I don't see that Toronto, who has never made it to an NBA Finals championship in a long, excuse me, in a long time, I do not see them winning this against a team who has been dominant these past five years and has not shown any signs of regressing, even though we have said it in the regular season, because that doesn't matter in the postseason. It's what matters. I see them probably getting one game on the Warriors and, and the I, I see them getting one game to the Raptors, and that's it, 4-1. to one. Yeah, so game one for the Raptors and Golden State Warriors is Thursday, so make sure you ch- tune into that. Um, and as always, we will keep you updated, all the finals, all the Stanley Cup action as it comes in. So um, moving on here, we have some sad news to report. NFL legend... Green Bay Packer quarterback Bart Starr has passed away. And, wow, it's crazy to see that such a great player has passed away. But a Packer legend nonetheless. And um, he will definitely be missed in the NFL community. And um, it sucks. But 
you, you know, NFL 100, the Bears and the Packers coming up um, this season, the first game to kick off NFL 100, and I'm sure there will be some some sort of tribute to Bart Starr. Played in the first Super Bowl with the Green Bay Packers, as you know, and from Alabama, and he's been in the Pro Bowl, excuse me, Pro Bowl four times, been nominated four times, so... um. Bart Starr has left the world. Rest in peace, Bart Starr. Um, any thoughts, CJ? Well, there's only five quarterbacks in NFL history that are multiple-time Super Bowl MVPs, and Bart Starr is one of them. Of course, he was a part of the Packers, who is the very first NFL franchise to win a Super Bowl in the, the Super Bowl two. area. Era. First two. And they won the second one, of course. They beat the Kansas City Chiefs and also – the Oakland Raiders, I believe it was, and Bart Starr, uh, MVP in both those games. And he was also a part of the famous NFL championship game called the Ice Bowl against the Dallas Cowboys, scoring the only touchdown of the game. Uh, excuse me, scoring the final touchdown of the game uh, in a 21-17 to victory in what is now called the Ice Bowl. But Bart Starr is now... He's been a Packers legend, and he'll continue to be, but now you'll just have to look at him in a different light because now he's not on the planet anymore. But this was due to failing health. He, he suffered multiple strokes and a heart attack, so uh, it, it was due to be expected, especially with his age. And it's very surprising that still a quarterback like him was able to keep surviving. So 85 is a good age for him, and it's sad to see him go, but it is what it is. A legend, to say the least, like I said on social media, a legend, to say the least, won the first two Super Bowls, and he is one of six Green Bay Packer, one of six Green Bay Packers players to be retired. Number 15, Bart Starr. Number three, Tony Candido. Don't know who that is. Don Hudson, number 14. Ray Nitschke, number 66. The late Reggie White, number 92. And Brett Favre, number four. So, it, it, some sort of tribute I'm, I'm very much expecting for the first game of the 2019-2020 NFL season. So, um, moving on. Another NFL topic we want to discuss here Chris Long announced retirement and with that announcement he admitted that he has used marijuana throughout his professional career and um came at uh, with sort of a shock to me I was like wow but you know a lot of players do it and It's starting to become legal, and I guess it's helping for pain management or something. I'm not condoning using drugs. They're still legal in my mind until there's a law saying it isn't. But I I guess he was using it for pain management or something. I'm not sure, but um, he admitted throughout his NFL career he smoked marijuana. I'm not sure how any of the teams caught him, didn't catch him because I thought there were drug tests or something. But um, your thoughts on this, CJ? I, I I don't see a big issue with Chris Long smoking marijuana. He's not the first, and he's not going to be the last to do it. Chris Long, yeah, he's won two Super Bowl championships. Yeah, he's the son of the great Howie Long. But the thing is, is as Josh said, it's not a, it's not illegal in a lot in – in most of the country, it's not. And when I see that Chris Long uh, smoked marijuana, I don't see a big issue with it. I really don't because now he's not in the he's not in the NFL anymore. So if I see a guy who probably played his t- he, no, he did play his time as a defensive lineman, who is one of the hardest positions on an NFL team. You have to endure uh, a lot of pain every single day at practice in games, lifting. You have to endure a lot of pain as a lineman in general. And when I see that Chris Long wanted to smoke, maybe, maybe, a, maybe a marijuana, maybe a doobie, I don't see an issue with it. I really don't because 
it may have helped him with the pain and whatever helps him relieve the pain because later in his life, he's going to feel it. He, he really is. That's what NFL players endure. Later in their life, they're probably going to face it. And it's unfortunate what happens to NFL players, but it's, the, it's what comes with the territory. So I don't see an issue with Chris Long saying that to people. What I have an issue with is when people are calling him out for using it, and I say, you really don't understand what this man has gone through in his career. He's endured a lot of pain, and for God's sakes, if he wanted to forget about that pain one second, he wanted to smoke a doobie. That's okay with me especially because he's a two-time Super Bowl champion. He's a Walter Payton Man of the Year Award winner. So you could just shut up because you don't know anything about what an NFL player does or what he endures. I am okay with Chris Long smoking some marijuana every once in a while because if it helps him want to feel better because of whatever it is, ACO injuries, uh you you got concussions going on. You have a lot of aches and pains. That's fine by me. It's not that big of an issue to me. What is, is the fact that people will call out somebody for using marijuana in the NFL when we are supposed to look up to them as athletes. Well, you should start telling your kids that, guess what? Sometimes it does help with the pain. Because as we as I said at the beginning of this rant, it is not illegal everywhere in the United States. So, and it is also used for medicinal purposes. It's called medicinal marijuana. It's okay. That's, a, that's what I had to say. Well, my, my question is, how hasn't the NFL caught this at all? Because I thought they did drug testing and stuff, you know? Yeah, they do do drug tests. Uh, I don't know how many drug tests they give out. I know in the NBA there's four drug tests that you have to give out, I believe. Uh, but I, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's something that he knew. Maybe it's something that he knew how to cover up. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. But the fact is is that he wasn't caught, and he, he is now out of the NFL, and he's allowed to say, hey, I wasn't caught. And I know for a fact I feel great right now because I didn't have to worry about the pain on this day or this day or this day. Yeah, so just a little tidbit from the NFL postseason. But Chris Long, two-time Super Bowl champion, has retired. So he will be missed by the Eagles probably because the Eagles could use a defensive guy, Chris Long, really, really good at his position. So um, moving on from the NFL to the NHL, video leaked that Evgeny Kuznetsov was in an apartment with some people with a woman on the bed, and there was a line of Coke on the table, what appeared to be a line of Coke. Video released after Team Russia won bronze, bronze excuse me in the big tournament and um Evgeny released a statement saying I got out of there as soon as I saw it I knew something was wrong I called somebody and they picked me up so do you believe this and um what what do you think the NHL is going to do about this do you think any punishment is going to happen for him being near it or whatnot, because you know the the same wrong place, wrong time. But I I'm hoping personally that this is true. And Evgeny Kuznetsov did not snort a line of coke because I love Evgeny. And I saw that video. I was like, why, 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 why? And the, he he put out a statement saying, nope, I didn't do it. And drug test me, whatever you got to do. So, um, y- your opinion on this one, CJ? Yeah, because it's it's bullcrap. <laughs> you know when that video was taken? A while ago. That was taken after the Stanley Cup was won by you guys. Yeah, and it dropped right as Team Russia won bronze. So, what a convenient time. Okay, so what I'm saying is, is that... Yeah, he can drug they can drug test him because that stuff is out of his system already. That stuff has been out of his system for almost over a year now. He's lying. You're telling me that after you guys won the Stanley Cup and he went to Las Vegas 
And he just so happened to say, oh my God, we're in Vegas. There's prostitutes. There's drugs. I never expected Las Vegas to have this stuff. This guy's full of crap. In my opinion, this guy is full of crap. I know you still have a soft heart in your spot, a soft spot in your heart for Evgeny Kuznetsov. Because I don't, because he's the guy who beat the Penguins last year on the last <laughs> goal. But that's not that's not the point. What is the point is that I think this guy is full of crap in saying that I I didn't once I saw the drugs and the women I wanted to get out of there. It's Las Vegas. You just won the Stanley Cup. You really think that when you go to Las Vegas that that stuff isn't everywhere? Because that video was re- that video was taken last year in the summer after you guys won the Stanley Cup. I do I think that punishment is going to be given to him? Yeah, on a smaller scale because I don't think that they're they're going to be able to uh, find the drugs in him. Because like I said, it was over a year ago that it happened. So those drugs are out of his system. You could drug test them. They're going to be out of his system. It's cocaine. It's not. It's not going to stay in your system. They can, they can drug test him, and they're not going to find anything. What they are going to find, though, is that when was this video taken was after the Stanley Cup, and you were found with drugs, but we can't say that you took those drugs, but we can't. But because we do the know. video didn't show him actually taking drugs. Exactly. Just a line of what appeared to be cocaine, because we're not sure if it was cocaine. The I, only reason he— I'm 95% sure it was cocaine, but, you, yeah. you know, not 100% sure, but— the, it was not seen that he was taking it. So the only reason that he said all this, I feel, and he ran out, is because he saw that it was being recorded. Had it not been recorded, or had it not been a video, or any video evidence of this happening, Evgeny would have absolutely done some drugs. I have no doubt in my mind you just won the Stanley Cup. I have no doubt in my mind that a professional athlete who just won a world championship, the first in Washington in a long time, and you're telling me that he did not want to just let loose a little bit? I don't buy it. I really don't, especially from a Russian. <laughs> well, I'm just hoping your opinion isn't biased because he knocked the no, Pittsburgh Penguins it's not. out last year. My opinion is based on men that do this stuff after they win championships, after they win big games, because it's what guys do. <laughs> huh. Interesting. So, Evgeny Kuznetsov for the Washington Capitals didn't have a strong season this year, especially in the playoffs. We'll see what happens with him. We'll see if the NHL puts down a punishment or something. But, you know... All right, next up on the table, CJ wanted to bring in a new segment called Jesus, They're Back. And you want to explain a little about what this is? Because I, I, I'm not really sure yet. So, like, the way, the way we just want to have a little bit more fun with this. We, we talk about sports all the time. We do. It's what we are. We're a sports podcast. Yeah. No freaking way. <laughs> but we got to have some enlightening moods here here and there because every single show, nobody wants to just turn in and hear us talk about just straight sports constantly. You got to have some more fun segments. And this one's called Jesus, They're Back. It's a little segment where we're going to name off one to three like little things out there, like people teams or other like irrelevant people out there who who keep bringing themselves back into the picture that just make it hilarious for this particular sport or this particular or this uh or just being actually great news that we don't get to talk about like for this Jesus they're back USA rugby is at the top of the rugby sevens in the in the entire world right now they are actually ha- they actually have a chance to take the sevens world title next uh, this upcoming Saturday in Paris against the Titan that is Fiji. They have a chance as USA Rugby who has not won anything, <laughs> anything, to actually get a chance to take this back for you at for the USA, which I, is great. I do sincerely apologize. I have never watched a rugby game before. 
That's okay. Not, I'm pretty sure about 90% of the people have in the entire world have never watched a rugby I sort game. of want to because it's like football, but more dirtier, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'll, get, I'll, get, I'll give you a, a bigger picture about it. It's a lot faster than football. It's 90 minutes, 45-minute uh, halves, but there's no stoppage of time. It'll go into, like, soccer for extra minutes, mm -hmm. but it's a lot more exciting than soccer because in soccer you could end a game – zero zero and have to go into sudden death and all this and that and rugby that rarely ever happens rarely ever happens and also there's a lot more scoring and the scoring is kind of just like football five points for a try you have to go over the line and touch the ball down that's five points and wherever the ball lands wherever you touch it down you have to kick it from that spot it's not like in football where you go to the center every time and kick an extra point you have to kick it from that line. So if you score all the way over in the left corner of the end zone, you have to kick it from that side uh. to try and make it, and it's worth two points, so you could get seven points. But if you don't, it's worth five points. They have uh, they have a try for points, which is a field goal. It's three points. You could try for that. And then that's about all the scoring there is, but that's a bigger picture of what it is. It's a, it has a lot of resemblance of football. Yeah, like you, kicking, like but you drop kick. Like, yes, exactly. The, there's no holder, which is a yeah. lot harder. It's all it's it's such a mental game in a lot of aspects because for for football, there's not that there's a lot of positions that don't need that much that much mental toughness. But the USA is back, and now the Lakers are back in in the world of sports, Magic Johnson has come out and said about the Lakers organization and Rob Palenka, I, I think he might lose his job now, their general manager. I really think that, like, the, with what Magic Johnson has said, he has, quote-unquote, screwed the Lakers, especially put, tying Genie's, Genie Buss's hands and putting them in a bad spot. Especially with what Rob, Pol what he's told about Rob Polinka, it has not been good. And then another one that is in the deep of the books is Richie Incognito is back. Uh oh. He is signed by the Raiders. They signed him on a one-year deal. I wonder who he's going to bully this time. I wonder if he could. Wasn't he the one being bullied? No, he was the one who was the bully. Oh, he was okay. the one who was okay. bullying people. Jeez. So he is back now for the Oakland Raiders, a team that just seems to be full of misfits and degenerates. That's interesting. Antonio Brown, Vontez Burfick, and now Richie Incognito. You got your top three there. Another one, domestic violence is now back. Phillies Herrera has now been arrested for domestic violence now. <laughs> yeah Phillies who is Phillies Herrera no he excuse me oh, that's not oh, his not, name not, shoot what's his name what what oh Dubal uh, Herrera uh, Dubal Herrera yeah he's been arrested on a simple assault charge right now for domestic violence that occurred over over the weekend of Memorial Day so now he's put on administrative leave so domestic violence it goes. It comes back once again because domestic violence. We all know that we love to see that every single week. We always have a great. We always have a great topic about that. But no, this isn't about getting into deep in those topics. And then finally, for my Jesus, they're back. It's Nick Saban. Nick Saban has now been back, and he has said that. He is, um, oh wait, no, excuse me, it's not Nick Saban, it's Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer is back, and he's thinking about coaching again. No, no he, he's way. teaching a class. He's going to come back to coaching. The man has done it multiple times now. <laughs> he did it at Florida, goes to Ohio State, does it at Ohio State, and now he'll probably go to a bigger school. So... Urban Meyer is now back, and don't be surprised if you see him here probably after next year being another coach because he he's a top football coach, and I know he could get a job anywhere. Well, um, I don't know. He said They said he was teaching a leadership class 
at Ohio State, which I'm not sure what gives him the credentials to do that after what happened the previous season. He got suspended. But, yeah, um, I, I was thinking about actually enrolling at Ohio State and taking his class just so I could get a picture with him. <laughs> <laughs> it is the safety school of the Midwest, so you might have an easier time getting in there just to have his class. Yeah, so um, good segment. We'll we'll get some more of those in. Um, who Josh will have? This is the first time, so Josh will have something to talk about next. Yeah, week. I, I I was sort of lost when he brought it up, but yeah. Um, we will leave you with this. NFL posted on Facebook. Green Bay Packers, Chicago Bears at Soldier Field in exactly 100 days. 100 days left into the NFL season. CJ, how hype are you? I, I, I'm hyped, but I'm not going to yell. <laughs> like oh, you. my God. Because it's still 100. We're still triple digits. Dang it. Hey, tomorrow will be 99 days. Okay, we're still almost triple digits then. 99 days without football. 99 days. Take one down, pass it around. 98 days. You get the gist. Why do you people listen to us? (laughs) (laughs) Because if if that's going to happen, might as well quit (laughs) every single podcast. We just love to have fun out here. That's about all the time we have, unfortunately. I would love to play around, make some more jokes with CJ, but our time is up. CJ, any last words for our lovely fans? Hmm. Unfortunate for JMU softball, their their run at the World Series for the Women's College World Series has ended. It's unfortunate, but... Tip As of the always, cap. go Dukes. Tip of the cap, they did a great job. Who cares if they lost? They made it far. JMU, with all their great sports programs, they're they're getting Harrisonburg, Virginia on the map. Harrisonburg, Virginia, you may not think it's a big town, but yes, it's a big oh, it's town. No, it, it's probably the same size as Winchester here. Yeah. It's just all college. It's just all university. I know. That's why I love it so much. And in other news... UVA has won their second championship. Lacrosse beating Jesus, they're back. (laughs) They're back. There you go. (laughs) Yep. So, yeah, that was relevant to your topic. But UVA winning their second championship. Um, Did you watch any of the game? Yeah, my buddy who was a videographer with us for football was there, is now their uh, uh, videographer intern. And so he's going to get a ring. So it's going to be actually nice to see that. Yeah. Wow. The national championship ring. That's yeah. awesome for videotaping. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. So, yep. As always, the Josh Kirby on Sports Podcast is brought to you by, excuse, brought to you by Rat 11 Chips. Make sure you find them in stores, Martin's Food Lion and Giant. As always, we are part of the Mayo Please Podcast Network. May, and thank you to Dave Johnson, JR Beats Official. And Route 11, as always, CJ Mintier, and I'm Josh Kirby. Saying so long until next time, we will catch you next week. Peace out.